Welcome to Slit Scan Using the Time Machine Top, where we're going to be creating a slit scan time warping effect. Let's start by adding a movie file in top. And then on our file parameter, let's change that to the count.mov. Next up here, we're going to right click and we're going to add a texture 3D top. We need that for our time machine because it's actually our first input. So our texture 3D on our prefill parameter, let's actually toggle that on. We're going to use this prefilling technique to fill our texture 3D with a fixed set of images. If we wanted our sequence to always start at the same image, which right now if we clicked pulse, we'd see that we start at a different image every time. Then what we could do is here on our movie file in top, we could change our play mode to specify index. And now if I click prefill, we'll see we always start at one. Perfect. I'm going to right click and add a time machine top. While the remap top will allow us to select pixels from a UV coordinate, the time machine allows us to select pixels from a W coordinate. We can think of this as selecting a pixel from a specific time or a history in our cache. Similar to the displace top, the time machine requires a second input. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a constant top. We're going to connect that constant top to our time machine. And we are going to click on the color parameter. So here on this color parameter, let's just move this value scale up and down. And here we can see that as we're changing this value, we're going from one to 32. But what if we wanted to go even further in time here? I can see I go up to a hundred. Well, we could adjust our cache size here on our texture 3d. So let's go ahead and set that to a hundred, but we need to remember to hit pulse so that we prefill our texture and then back on our constant, we can scrub this back and forth. We see we go up to a hundred, but only down to 40. And like, why is that the case? Well, on our time machine, we have a black offset parameter that is set to negative 60, which describes the boundaries of our time offset. So right now we can only go 60 steps backwards. Let's increase that to negative 100. Now we see we're at one. Okay. Now, if we move up and down here on our value ladder, we can see that when we're at one or white, we're at a hundred. And as we go back through gray into black, we're going back in time and we are at one. All right. That's just a kind of quick, uh, recap or look at how the time machine works, but let's look at how we can make that slit scan effect. So I'm going to double click on the network here and I'm going to add a movie file in top. Great. We're going to use that count MOV again for this example. And here we're going to right click. We're going to remake this little network for our time machine. And we need to add a texture 3d first. And then here, I'm just going to change the cache size to 100 and I'm going to right click and add my time machine. All right. For our black offset, rather than changing that manually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag the cache size parameter of my texture 3d and drop it onto my black offset and set it as a reference. What we know though, is that this needs to be a negative number. So I'm going to set this to negative here in the front. And now we see that that's negative hundred. So as I change my cache size, this will also change. All right, perfect. For our second input for this example, let's use a ramp. We can set our ramp down here and on the common page, let's set the resolution of our ramp to nine by one. And for the viewer smoothness, let's set that to nearest pixel. So we can see each of those steps in our ramp. I'm going to go ahead and connect that to my time machine. And then if I click on my time machine here on the common page, I'm going to go to input smoothness and set that to nearest pixel. Now we can see we have each of those steps from our ramp shown as different slices in time. This is just kind of the beginning of creating that slit scan effect. 
All right. Now let's say we wanted to create that more kind of warping fluid movement that's even denser here, that has even more slices. Well, what we can do is we can add a different video. I recommend that you use a webcam or a video with people moving and flowing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the palette up here in the top left-hand corner, and I'm going to go to the web browser component here in the palette. So it's tools, scroll down, web browser. I'm gonna click and drag and drop that in. The web browser is a really handy way to get to things on the web. So I am going to add an address here. I'm going to copy it from over on the side of a video that we can use as a reference to see this movement here in our time machine to create that slit scan effect. So first up, I am going to connect this first input into my texture 3D. We're going to see how that fills. We have this going amazing. Before I go any further, for my resolution, I'm going to match the resolution I have here for my X with my texture 3D's cache size. So I'm going to click and drag that cache size parameter and just drop it on the X parameter. That will make it so that I have a lot more slices and we're going to want that as we look at our time machine. Next up, I'm going to make this viewer active using the A key. I'm going to play the video and then I'm going to make it full screen. And the next thing I'm going to do over here is I am going to make this viewer active. Now here we can actually see that we have this fluid movement. We're starting to see a bit more. If we go to our texture 3D and increase our cache size to say 250, we can see our time machine fill up. And we can also see those slices, that kind of quintessential look for slit scan appear. If we wanted to get rid of those kind of individual slices, that kind of hard cut between each slice, we could change our input smoothness from nearest pixel back to interpolate pixels. And here we see we have that fluid time machine looking effect. We could increase our cache size even more to say 450 and see how our time machine here fills up with each of those slices. We see how it kind of warps and moves around. So this is just a quick way to see how we can use the time machine in conjunction with our texture 3D to create a slit scan time warping effect.